Lauren. Did you know that you can have mites living in your face and in your eyelash follicles and you might just be mixing that up with your mascara? Take that back. Okay, live in your world of make-believe. You don't have mites on your face, but most people probably do. Did you realize that you're never alone? I can't deal with bugs living on my face. It's gross. Well, not so young lady, look what you've done. Most people have them as part of their body's normal microbiome. But I don't want a microbiome. Why did you tell me? Demodex are not gross or abnormal. I mean, you never even know they're there unless they become a problem. They get too many in number, but they act as a natural housekeeper for your pores. They eat dead skin cells and some oils. I mean, they can help you. You shouldn't have told her that. She can't handle stuff like that. Hun, you have obviously caught a bug. You're gonna get us all sick. Go on up to bed. That's not fair, Grandma Boomer. Lauren was out here with us with probably the same virus. Them's the brakes, kiddo. She's the baby of the fam. Whatever. Did I just overhear that you have mites living on your face? Why do humans need so many creatures living with them to survive? We don't need anyone else. We are superior. Who asked you, hun? If we want teeny tiny organisms living up on our face, eating up our dead skin cells, then who are you to say something about it? I kind of like that somebody's getting to enjoy them because I don't want them sloughing up my face. But since I've been on Earth, I've been researching your science and I've read all about the parasites. The tapeworm intrigues me. Mama Mipmop will not allow me to have it as a pet because she says I need a human to incubate it. Unless one of you would agree. Stop. Just stop. Lauren, do your eyes feel normal other than the fact you keep wiping them? Well, yeah. Then don't worry about it. Is there any way that I don't have mites? Yes, it's possible. That's fine, then I don't have them. Okay, but what is 100% is the bacteria in your intestinal tract and your skin. So you have to have those to survive. And that's what I was trying to say before. You have more bacterial cells living with you than human. So we might as well call you a bacteria with human parasites. I mean, technically, that's correct. What? Why are you guys keeping this going? Don't you have an eat pod to eat or a neighboring planet to invade or something? But I've already consumed my AM eat pod. And I only want to invade the Earth, and here I am, so. Yeah, the day you do that, I move to Mars. Lauren, let's go to my lab and discuss this. I promise I'll make you feel better. Microbes are bacteria, viruses, and fungi. We have trillions of microbes, mostly bacteria, that protect our intestines and skin. We desperately need them to be there. There are over a thousand species of bacteria in your intestines, or more commonly called the intestinal microflora or the gut microbiome. We have a symbiotic relationship, which means that both organisms mutually benefit. They help us keep healthy, and we give them room and board. Here's my friend, E. coli. Hi, my name is E. coli, and I live in your intestine. My friends and I, we're called the gut microbiome or intestinal flora. And what we do is that we're going to break down the dietary fiber that you consume, which will help you maintain your weight, and we lower the chance of cancers and heart disease. And we also communicate with your immune cells, so if you need to fight some bad guys, and um, we also run security, we won't let the bad guys take over. And also, new research has shown that we might play a role in maintaining your overall health of your heart and brain. And we can also help to control blood sugar. Thanks, E. There are ways you can replace the microbiome and influence it with the right type of bacteria for your needs. They are called probiotics, which contain live microorganisms. You eat them 
and they join the group. Many foods like yogurt and some supplements contain specific types of bacteria that will help colonize specific parts of your body and promote optimal health. I'm gonna give you a playback of when my mother took a broad spectrum antibiotic for eight days because she had a root canal and her dentist wanted to make sure her tooth was clear of infection. There are many types of antibiotics. Some target a specific bacteria, but others will cast a wide net and destroy not only the bad, but also the good guys. My mom was told to take probiotics and she ignored the doc's suggestions. Oh, Barb. Brain, we have an emergency. The gut microbiome is dying off at a fast rate. Something is happening that is very bad. Yes, your enteric system also let me know there was a problem. Um, let me go through what all Barb is doing lately. Okay, I see what it is. Oh no, please do not tell me that she took those broad spectrum antibiotics or whatever it is that will kill off all my employees in here. Please don't tell me she did that. Yes, she has been on those. Um, let me send her a message that there is something wrong here. Jace Louise, why are my guts all twisted up in a knot? I now remember the dentist said to take a probiotic when I was on the antibiotics for my dental appointment. Oh no. Intestine, she is going to go get help. She will be consuming your new employees within the hour. Well, in the meantime, let's just hope that the bad guys don't notice that we're vulnerable. Oh no. What? What is happening? Clostridium's here. We don't have enough good guys to fight them off. I can try to stall them, Brain, but you need to tell Barb to hurry or she's not gonna make it out of that store. I'll tell the end of this tale. Barb barely had enough time to get to the store and back without having to rush to the restroom. But she did get the right probiotics to replace her gut microbiome with the right type of bacteria. It took her a week to get back on track. She learned her lesson. Let's go back to the patio and see if Lauren feels better about the microbiome. Well, how do you feel now, Lauren? Okay, so my skin and my intestine microbiome can stay, but I don't want the face mites. I will be happy to check for you. What do they look like? Well, they're transparent and about 0.3 millimeters long. I mean, can you see something like that? Hmm. Does it look like a stubby little worm with six, seven, eight legs? Yes, they're in the arachnid family. Oh, well, she doesn't have them. See you guys later. Thank goodness. Okay, you're all set. I apologize for stressing you out. I'm gonna go check on Whitney. Oh, so we're talking to a virus again? Unfortunately, yes. I'm trying to sleep and she won't shut up. I just want to watch Wicked and Morty and my new mommy is being mean. Well, that one seems to be like the one that brought Lauren down. She seems so innocent, but probably a little mastermind. I'm no mastermind. I just need a mommy and Netflix. No, you're evicted. How did I get this first? I mean, I'm careful. You and Grandma Boomer aren't. Well, it only takes one slip up to get sick. So once I make the one slip up, <coughs> how does she take hold and make me sick? Let's get them alive. There are many types of viruses that can make us ill. But Gina Germ is a rhinovirus, or RV for short. So she causes an upper respiratory infection that we refer to as the common cold. There are about a hundred strains or what we call serotypes of rhinoviruses and they cause roughly about half of all colds. Here's a playback of Whitney touching the table and then her nose. When Whitney touched the table, she picked up Gina, then without sanitizing her hands, which would have destroyed Gina, most likely. Me no like the burn juice. She touched her nose and made the transfer. Another way you could have received Gina is if Lauren coughed and she was carried via a droplet and landed on your face. Whitney got it from what is called a fomite, an object or material that is likely to carry an infection. The types of fomites can be tables, which are very common. So are doorknobs and clothing. Hi, will you be my new mommy? <laughs> Dishes, a lot of things. 
symptoms are fomites. The rhinovirus entered Whitney's nose and the mucus that lines the nasal passageway brought it to the back of the throat like a mucus river. So Gina was wearing a coat called a capsid that has a specific protein key on the surface. After testing many locks, she finally found the right receptor, which is analogous to a lock. The key fit and the cell was deceived. Once the lock accepts the key, or in other words, the receptor accepts the antigen, the cell changes shape to allow the virus inside, just like someone opening the front door for you. We call a virus particle a virion. So the virion is gonna remove its capsid coat and expose its RNA in the case of a rhinovirus. It will then locate an organelle called a ribosome, which is a protein-making factory. Protein production in a cell goes like this. The DNA, which is in the nucleus, makes the mRNA, the messenger RNA, it leaves the nucleus, which makes the protein at the ribosome outside of the nucleus in the cytoplasm. During a molecular hijacking, the cell's DNA, and thereby mRNA, isn't used anymore. The virus makes the components it needs by commanding the ribosome to translate its RNA. No ribosome. <laughs> This message came from the DNA in the nucleus, I promise. The ribosome is duped into believing it's translating the host cell's mRNA. No, we can't stop. We gotta keep making more my friends. Keep going. Once the ribosome has translated as much as it can, the virions are assembled. And once there are enough clones, they burst the cell and start the process again with a new host cell. It's getting so crowded. We need to all put on our capsid coat. All of them have keys. We're gonna have to burst out of here and go find new houses and make more of ourselves. Power in numbers, guys. There's plenty for everyone. One virus particle like Gina can turn into an infection in the body that can last up to three weeks. The virus has evolved over time with humans to where their keys or antigens will fit the human host cells receptors or locks. Gina's ancestors did the spy work and figured out the structure of the lock. Natural selection dictated that the viruses that figured out the structure of the receptor were the ones that survived over time. That's why Gina can't infect Bomb Bomb Bip Bop or her family, as they are aliens from outer space that didn't evolve along with Earth viruses. And this is why maybe your pets don't catch your cold. But there are strains that can pass from human to animal, so it's best to keep them safe away from you while you're ill. I hope you enjoyed the final episode of Dr. Bond's World Season 1. Join us for Season 2, which will be coming soon. We're going to cover topics in cellular biology, anatomy and physiology, parasitology, and biochemistry. I hope you will take the time to check out my other videos on my channel. I plan to release a full anatomy and physiology tutorial series. Leave a comment if there's something you need help with. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel.